Hey guys, today I want to talk about World Composition, which is a tool in Unreal Engine 4 that will really help you build some large-scale worlds for your games. Um, let's roll right into it. Uh, I'm going to start by making a new third-person project. Um, now this can be used with many other different templates. Um, I just, uh, this seems like one of the most common templates that people are trying to build on. Uh, so let's go ahead and build that. So the idea with uh, World Comp is we're going to create a terrain in a grid sort of style. And <clears throat> the uh, player, their uh, device is only going to load certain portions of the grid depending on where they're standing and what's visible so that their um, resources aren't wasted on running the entire map when they're only located on a portion of it. So uh, let's go into our maps folder here. We got third person example map. <clears throat> I'm going to do control and the end button and uh, create a new level. We're going to go ahead and save this and call this world. Okay, and then we're going to make sure to get that back in that maps folder. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and delete the third person example. All right, cool. So now what this is going to do is we're actually going to create a bunch of levels. And all those levels are going to be pieced together. So this world level is going to hold a bunch of smaller pieces. And the world level is going to be our, our things that are going to apply to the whole map. So our, our sun, the lighting, the, um, the skies, those sorts of things. And then our terrain and the items that we place on that terrain, any meshes and those sorts of things, um, will be broken into each of the smaller ones. So <clears throat> first off, I'm going to, real quick, I'm going to get rid of these two things. Because if you haven't already selected them, then you won't see those. Your screen probably looks more like this. If you go up to Window here, you can hit Levels, and it brings this up. <clears throat> and then what we need to do is go into the World Settings and enable world composition when we do that if we go back to levels we have an additional button here um, and it's this component which we'll use soon <clears throat> and put that back down there now in our uh, main world here we can go ahead and select this floor and delete it so now in this main world which is also referred to as the persistent level in this situation uh, has our light source, our player spawn, and those sorts of things, but no uh, meshes or terrain. So what we're going to do is go up here and go to Levels and Create New. So now we're going to name our new world. I like to use sort of a, a grid system uh, in my naming conventions. That way it's easier to keep track of each piece of the world. So since this is going to be the center of our world, I'm going to use x0 y y0 and then go ahead and save that so <clears throat> on this hierarchy over here right now we're in the persistent level because it's blue i want to work on x0 y0 so i'm going to click on that and make current once you've done that let's go ahead and add a landscape to this and I'm going to center that landscape to 0, 0, 0. And for these purposes, I, I think a smaller, like a 15 by 15 would be good. Um, because if we make it huge, then we're going to load huge chunks. And that may not be necessary. If you make it too small, it can become kind of inconvenient. Um, and I think you'll see exactly how that works a little bit later. So let's go ahead and create this terrain. So now we have this. Um, and we can go ahead and sculpt it and make our mountains uh, just like any other terrain. You can add your messes. Um, <clears throat> and then down here, you see we have the square here. Well, this acts sort of as a mini map. And although it hasn't updated with these hills yet, it will. And sometimes when you save it, it does. Um, but every so often, this map will go ahead and update. So now what we can do is we have this small area, but it's not very big. Um, if we come down here, we can select this area, right click and um, 
at adjacent landscape level. And then there's these four different buttons, which are which direction we want to go into. So I'm going to add one to the right. And looking at um, how Unreal Engine would lay out a grid, that would be x1, y0. So let's go ahead and make that. And you can see down here on our map, it added another square next to it. And also in our playable world, it did. And you can see the map updated with some of the hills. Sometimes it just takes a little time to do that. Okay, so let's go back into our landscape mode. And now I'm forming hills and they're between both of those areas. So in my editing of the terrain, it's treating the whole thing kind of as one big area. However, as we generate a bigger map, it's going to be loaded separately. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's add a couple more squares. So I'm going to do um, add adjacent and I'm going to go below. So this one would be x0, y1. Okay, and then I'm going to add one below this. And this would be uh, x1, y1. And you can go as big as, well, not quite as big as you want. If you zoom way out on the map, this yellow square is currently the maximum set by Unreal Engine. Um, so we're going to zoom in, but it's still a huge area. All right. So as we added those two, we look and we see there's a bit of an issue with this mountain. Let's go back to landscape. As soon as you try and use your landscape tool over that, a sculpt or anything, it blends them together. And then we could, you know, always, um, let's see here, let's go to sculpt and flatten and combine these all together. Where normally, if you were making these separately, then you'd have to go and try and match up each of these and try and get them as close as possible. And it would just be impossible to create a smooth line. So, all right. So now let's do a little test. Let's go ahead and play this. And we can see all of our mountains on both sides. Uh, normally, or also on the mini map at the bottom, you can see we're now crossing in between two of the different squares. And then we could do the same thing if we go this way. <clears throat> now, right now, because we don't have a ton of area, the um, it's not staging what's being viewed by the player uh, because everything is so close. But as you continue to add area, that situation will change and you will view more and more um, pieces of the grid as your map, well, as you move. All right, perfect. So one other thing is if we look down here, we can see where it's a streaming distance 50,000. That is a number that can be changed if you add in new layers and assign each of these uh, grid pieces to that layer. So then you can reduce or increase the streaming distance depending on the needs of your game or how, um, how many you resources you want it to use in when the player plays it. Now, another important thing to know is that when you're making this, if you place a mesh or anything in one of these, so let's say, hmm, do we have any meshes? Uh, this will work. Okay. So currently on our hierarchy over here, we're looking at X0, Y0. And I'm going to look at the mini map and I'm going to put myself in that block so I have an idea of where it is. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a cube in there. And just to make it easier to see, I'm going to scale it up a bit. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm going to also move it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, let's go back there. Okay. 
So we have a cube, and it's in x0, y0. Now, on our hierarchy, I'm going to go ahead and uh, toggle the visibility of x0, y0, and the cube goes away, as it should, because it's a piece of that. Well, if we take a cube, we're currently selected x0, y0, and we put this cube over here, it gives us a warning and says the actor is outside the bounds of what our current level. And I'm going to override it for this example, but basically what that means is you place something in a level it doesn't be belong in or that wouldn't work properly for uh, what we're trying to do. Because what happens here is the I'm going to toggle the visibility of x0, y0, and that cube goes away. Well, we don't want that situation because if the player's over here and he walks towards this cube, he should be able to see what's in it. Um, but, and if we toggle, let's see here, yep, x0, y0, the landscape is going away, but the cube is still there. So those are situations that we want to avoid, and there is a warning there to help. Um, so if we go back to the hierarchy, Let's get the select tool. And um, oops. Uh, select. Let's go ahead and delete that cube. So now you say, if I want to build in a different square, how do I go ahead and do that? Um, so you would go over on this hierarchy, and you can select down here, and then on the right, it selects which one x0, y1, and we would make that the current. So now it's blue in the hierarchy. So now if we go ahead and place this cube over here, okay. so now we have uh, one cube in each square, and as I toggle the visibility, the cube in that square goes away, and the same with this one. One other important thing um, that you should know is next time you open up your game, it'll probably look like this, a map with nothing on it. You have to go into this hierarchy again and select all and then hit load and then your map uh, should appear. Um, if you aren't showing the cubes, then you need to do that. Um, anyways, that is all. Um, as you create a bigger map, then this will help your device be more efficient as the players play. Thanks for watching. See ya.